Okay, so in practice, this will be taking a lot longer to converge. So let me run back to my program here. And let's just run it. There it is. Okay, let me um, open up the output here. This one took 10,400 iterations. The plot, this is an old one, sorry. Uh, the one I just ran looks like this. So you'll see, so this is between 0 and 10. Um, there is quite a bit of variation in the errors here as I start picking random entries. Um, I guess this is to be expected because it is essentially completely random data. Uh, what is it, 5% of the time? Yeah. Um, but that's okay. That's what I, I really, really want. I want to uh, have some, some good variation in there. So I'm not too surprised at the spikiness of this graph. However, um, for reference, let me pull up. This is the original char data set. This is what I'm training on. So the top left output box represents plus. This is multiply. This is minus. This is divide. OK, so now let me open up noisy data set. All right, so this is interesting. So here it is. Um, let me go back to the plus. So you'll see here, this is the plus guy. This guy actually had nothing changed. That's random. That can happen. The one that corresponds to multiply was this one. So in this one, only one of the bits was flipped. That's this guy right here. For subtraction, um, that's this guy. Nothing was flipped. And finally, for division, um, nothing was flipped. So in this, the very last thing that we trained on, you can see uh, this epic, we actually only modified one pixel of one of the data points out of four. Okay. So to show that we're actually getting different data, let's go ahead and run this one more time. That one trained very quickly. That's surprising. There's the training data for that one, less than a thousand iterations. Let me open up noisy data set again and go back to plus. Here's the plus. Um, this is times, this is minus, this is divide. In this case, only one pixel was changed and it was on the divide one. Uh, for that epic, let me go back and run this again. Uh, let's go back to it. Let me reload noisy data set. So here they're all in a bizarre order. So here's a plus. This one corresponds to plus. This guy had two pixels swapped here and here. Multiplies should show output in the top right, which means that this is multiplied. This one was uh, unaltered for this epic. The minus sign is this guy. This guy actually altered two pixels again, these guys. And finally, the division symbol. This guy altered one pixel, okay? So it is, in fact, randomly altering these pixels, and I can see that here. Um, but this does illustrate one of the shortcomings. Let me grab the convergence here. This illustrates one of the shortcomings of this completely random noise like this. Um, really, what you're going to get is, you know, for character recognition, I would expect that you would get more systematic type noise. You would have, you know, an E that looks kind of like an O, that looks kind of like an A, uh, but not, you know, just completely random noise. And this truly is, if you think about it, on the grid, this is just flipping on and off pixels all over the place. Uh, but, you know, with only 5% getting flipped, it should vaguely look like the training data, right? Which it does. Um, with that in mind, it'll sort of hopefully make this network more robust and able to handle just sort of some dirty data. Um, out of curiosity, I haven't actually done this, let me let me make this a larger network. Let's add another layer. 
give it another sigmoid transfer layer here and see what kind of results we get again with 5%. Oh, I have errors. Oh, duh. This has to be length 4. Um, this obviously also has to be length 4. Training. Done. Let's see what we got this time. Interesting. So this one looks quite different. This one came down, settled right around 4 for a while. Came down again, settled around 2. Came down again and was bouncing all over the place until we finally converged. For completeness, let me reopen the noisy data set. And so that was our plus. That was our divided by. This is our times. This is our minus. All right. Um, now, it could be the case that this is, in fact, more robust because this is um, this has been trained for a longer number of iterations, so it's seen more different noisy data. Uh, but who knows? We could do all kinds of stuff. We could make this transfer function dot Gaussian just to see if that gives us something different. Let's run that. Training for quite a while. Wow, training for a long time. This one might actually hit the limit. I don't know. Suppose I could pause this. Interesting. So this one actually maxed out with the Gaussians. Um, I stopped it from trying to do a, a million iterations and went back and made 100,000 the cap. And you can see with the Gaussian, I'm actually hunting right around 7 for an error. Sometimes dipping down, but never actually converging. Let me load this noisy data set again. There is multiply. That's a pretty messed up multiply. Uh, there's a subtract, I believe. That's a division. That is a plus. That one was fine. So that's interesting. Um, I would not have expected that the Gaussian was not robust enough for this. So let's let's go back to sigmoid. And I'm just doing this to show that um, it really matters what you choose. Look, set it to sigmoid, converge right away. Let me replot this one. Boom, no problem. You bring these up, load the noisy data set. Here's minus, unchanged, there's divided by, flip that pixel. Here's multiplied by, flip this corner and that one. And there's plus, unchanged. Uh, I could run this again and certainly get a different result. This one takes a lot longer. Let's go back, look at the training. You can see it was much spikier. Let's pull in the very last data set we trained on. Uh, noisy data set. There's the divided by. There's the plus. We flipped that one. There's a multiplied by. We dropped that guy. There's the minus. We actually flipped three pixels here. And cumulatively, this whole data set was still beneath our error, which means it probably detected them fairly correctly. So that's another thing to realize. Um, another fault in our. <coughs> um, binary noise trainer here is it could be random chance that let's say the network has already converged and essentially understands these four okay it's got the data set down it could be the case that randomly my data set happens to be unchanged and I that's it my very last um, my very last iteration I just happen to get data that isn't really that noisy and it's fine I get it all the time um, but that's not really what I want. I want it to actually see dirty data some of the time, and I want to force those to be included. So what I'd like to do, I think, in the future, uh, maybe in an upcoming video, is improve this noise density to be more than just a density all the time. What I want in addition to this is I actually want to look at the error for data that is that is certainly dirty, right? I want actual alter data to appear and I want to know 
if it's picking that up correctly or not. Um, and I'll have to think about exactly how I want to do that uh, because the error is computed every iteration and it's just going to be it. So maybe what we'll do is we'll add something like a noise frequency that says 20% of the time I alter 5% of the data, you know, 80% of the time I don't, or 50-50 even, you know, 50% of the time the network's going to see clean unaltered data, 50% of the time I'm going to throw some noise in there, uh, you know, maybe I'll flip one in 10, so maybe it'll be noise density of 10%. And then what I'll do is I'll force the error to get evaluated in a smarter way where I look at some random dirty data and the original data to actually validate that my network is converging to what I want it to converge to. Uh, but anyway, that's that's something for the for the next video. So uh, this has dragged on plenty long. Hopefully you guys can get this working also. Um, I don't think there's any any XMLs or anything worth posting, so I guess that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, leave questions below in the comments and I will um, hopefully make a new video uh, shortly and uh, see you guys soon. Later.